Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a quick and fun brick breaker game in Scratch, where you can bounce balls on your paddle to hit bricks. We'll also make it so that some can drop power-ups and spawn even more balls to help you clear all of the bricks. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, let's create the paddle for our game. So I'll just rename the sprite to paddle. And I'll go inside of the costumes and delete the second cat costume and clear the first one. And for our paddle, I'll just use the rectangle tool to create a really simple rectangle over here, like this. And I'll make sure to center it on the middle of the drawing area. And then I'll change the fill to a black color. All right, so now we have our paddle. And now let's go back inside of the code. And we want our paddle to stay on the bottom of the screen over here. So I'll go to events and drag a wind flag clicks. And then I'll go to motion and drag a go to X, Y block. And under the wind flag clicked, let's go to X zero and Y, let's say negative 170. So that's around the bottom of the screen. And then if we try it out, then as you can see, our paddle is over here. All right, so now we want our paddle to follow our mouse pointer. So to do so, let's go to control and grab a farver loop and put it after the go to X, Y and then go to motion and let's go down and drag a set X2 block and put it inside of the forever loop. And let's set X to the mouse X position. So that's inside of sensing. And let's just drag the mouse X block. All right, so that's pretty much it for all of the code for the paddle. And if you try it out, then as you can see, we have a paddle that follows our mouse. All right, cool. So next up, we want to spawn some bricks on the top of the screen. So let's create a new sprite, and let's paint an empty sprite. And inside of our drawing area, let's actually convert to bitmap mode. So click this button right here. And now everything should be in pixels or tiny squares. So if I select the paintbrush and then make it to a size of four, then I'm going to actually create a square that is four blocks wide and four blocks tall, like this. Okay, now I'm just gonna fill it in. And for the color, I think I'm actually going to make it a blue color. So let's drag the brightness over here and let's drag the color to somewhere over here for that blue color. All right, now let's paint it. And now we have our blue brick on the screen. Okay, so back inside of the code, I'm going to go to events and drag a wind flag clicked. And I'm going to first go to looks and set the size of the brick to 200% because right now it's a bit small. All right. And now I want to start spawning the bricks from the top left of the screen. So I'll go to motion and drag the go to X, Y block. And I'll make the brick start spawning from over here. So that's around X negative let's say 224, and then Y positive 166. Okay, so that's around this position. And now let's create clones of the bricks. So to do so, I'm actually going to create a new custom block. So let's go to my blocks and create a block. And I'll call this something like spawn bricks, and then select run without screen refresh, and click OK. So first off, I'm going to go to control, and grab a repeat. And let's just try something like repeat 25 for now. And now let's scroll down and drag a create clone of myself and put it inside of the repeat. And then after that, let's go to motion and drag a change X by and put it after the create clone of myself. All right, and now let's change the number from 10 to 16 inside of here. And then lastly, let's go to my blocks again and drag the spawn bricks under the wind flag clicked right after the go to X, Y. So now if you try it out, then as you can see, we have a blue line, which is actually a row of brick clones. And if we change the number from 16 to 17 inside of here, then as you can see, there's actually a spacing between the bricks. However, instead of changing X by 17, let's change it back to 16. And inside of the brick costume, Let's go to the eraser tool and set the size to one. And then 
Let's erase the very top row and the rightmost column of the square. So now if we go inside of the code, then there should be a spacing between all of the bricks like so. All right, cool. So I'm just going to make sure to rename this sprite to brick. And now instead of repeat 25, let's try something like repeat 30. And now I'm actually going to hide the original sprite. So I'll go to looks and drag a hide block right after the wind fly clicked. And I'll only make the clones show. So I'll go to control and drag a when a clone. Then let's go to looks and show it. All right. And right now there are actually too many bricks on the screen. So let's try something like repeat 29. And okay, so now we have a perfect row of bricks on the screen like so. And now we want multiple rows. So let's go to control and grab a repeat and put it around our current repeat. And let's have like eight rows of bricks. So let's repeat eight times. And then after the repeat 29, which is creating one row, we want to move the original brick sprite down so that it can create the next row of bricks. So let's go to motion and let's drag a change Y by, and that's after this repeat 29. And let's change Y by negative 16 or the height of one brick. And we also want to make sure to reset the X position of the brick so that it can spawn the next row. So let's also grab a set X to, and let's set X to the position that was in here, which is negative 224. All right, so now if we try it out, then as you can see, we have eight rows of bricks, like so. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it for our brick sprite. And now for our ball, let's create a new sprite. And let's name this one ball. And for our ball sprite, let's grab the circle tool. And I'm gonna create a small circle like this. By the way, I'm gonna also hold shift to create a perfect circle. All right. And I'm gonna center it and make it a black fill. And I'll also make it a bit smaller. And all right, this is going to be our ball sprite. And now let's go back inside of the code and I'm gonna grab a wind fly clicked and I'm going to hide the original ball sprite. And that's because I'm planning on adding multiple balls to the game. So I'm going to actually use only ball clones. I'm just going to go to control and drag a wait one seconds block. And then I'm going to create a clone of myself, which will be the ball clone. So for the clone, let's drag a when a a clone and let's go to looks and show it. And when the ball spawns, we want it to start on top of the paddle. So let's go to motion and go to the paddle. And then we also want the ball to appear on top of it. So let's grab a change Y by block and drag it right after the go to paddle. And let's make it change Y by 10. All right. So now, as you can see, a ball clone appears right on top of where the paddle was. All right. So now we want the ball to actually move and hit the bricks. So to do so, let's go to variables. And we have to create two new variables to measure the ball's speed. So first off, let me delete the my variable and create a new variable. I'll call this one x velocity, which is speed, and then select for this by only and click OK. And for the second one, I'll call this one y velocity. And then again, select for this by only and click OK. All right. So when the ball clone is created, let's first set the x and y velocities to a certain number. And for that, I'm actually going to create a new variable just to keep track of the starting speed. And I'll call this one original speed instead of starting speed. And again, I'm going to select for this by only and click OK. All right. So when the clone is created, I'm going to set the ball's starting speed or original speed to let's try seven. And then after that, let's just set the ball's x velocity and y velocity to original speed. And then after that, let's make the ball move based off the X and Y velocities. So let's go to control and drag a forever loop. And I'm just going to drag it right after all of these blocks. And then for our movement, let's create a new custom block. 
So let's go to my blocks and create a block. And I'll call this one something like update movement. And then I'll click OK. And let's drag the update movement block inside of the forever loop and inside of the update movement block. Let's go to motion and drag a change x by. And we want the ball to change x by x velocity. And also, we want the ball to change y by y velocity. All right. So now if we try it out, then as you can see, a ball spawns and moves to the upper right of the screen. And now we want the ball to actually bounce off the bricks and also bounce off the walls. So inside of the update movement block, let's go to control and drag an if. And let's go to sensing and check if it's touching the brick. Then let's go to variables and let's make it bounce off the brick. So let's drag a set x velocity to, let's go to operators, grab a multiplication operator, and go back to variables and drag x velocity times negative one. So while the ball is moving towards the right or left, if it's touching a brick, then it's going to change its x direction to the opposite direction. All right, and then after this set x velocity, let's just right click duplicate and drag this change x by x velocity after that block. All right, and now for the y velocity, it's going to be the same thing. So let's duplicate this block. And instead of setting x velocity, let's set y velocity. So set y velocity to y velocity times negative one, and then change y by y velocity. All right, so it's the same thing for if the ball is moving upwards or downwards, then it's going to change its direction to the other direction. All right, so if we try it out, then as you can see, once the ball hits the brick, then it changes direction. All right, cool. So now we want the brick to actually disappear once it hits the ball. So let's go to events and let's broadcast a new message. And let's call this something like break brick. And the ball will broadcast this message whenever it hits a brick. And then the brick will disappear once it receives a message and if it's touching that ball. So let's broadcast the break brick message right before the set y velocity and also right before the set x velocity when it touches a brick. And then inside of the brick sprite, let's drag a winner receive break brick. Then we want the brick clones to check if it's touching the ball. Then we want to delete the brick clone. All right, so if we try it out, then nothing really happens, even though the ball is broadcasting the break brick and the brick is receiving the break brick message. And the reason why this is not working is because once the ball touches the brick and broadcasts the break brick message, the ball immediately moves away, which then makes the ball not touching the brick by the time the brick actually receives the break brick message. So to fix this, we have to create a hidden clone when the ball touches the brick and then that hidden clone will not move so that the bricks can check if it's touching the ball. So to do so, let's go inside of the ball sprite and I'll create a new block. I'll call this something like create a stationary clone. So that pretty much means that the ball will create a non-moving clone that will be hidden. And then let's drag this create stationary clone block right before the broadcast break break message in both the x and y velocity parts. And then let's take out the broadcast break brick. And let's drag one of them under the create stationary clone block. Okay. And now the moment a ball touches the brick, we want it to create a stationary clone. So inside of control, let's drag a create clone of myself. And let's put that before the broadcast break brick. And to make this clone a stationary clone, we have to go to variables and create a new variable. And I'll call this something like is stationary clone. And then make sure to select for this by only and click OK. All right. And now to label it as the stationary clone, let's set is stationary clone 
to yes, and then set it to no right after creating the clone. So all the stationary clone is going to do is that it's not going to move, and it's also going to stay hidden. So inside of the when I start as a clone, let's drag a if else, and let's drag all of the code other than the show inside of the if, and let's check if this ball clone is not a stationary clone. So if is stationary clone is equal to no, which means that it's an actual normal moving ball clone, then we want the ball to do all of this stuff. Otherwise, if it is a stationary clone, then let's go to looks and let's make it hidden. So let's drag a set ghost effect to 100. And that pretty much means that the ball will be invisible, but other sprites will still be able to detect it. All right, and then lastly, we want to set is stationary clone to no before we create our original first ball, which will be the moving ball. Okay, so now if you try it out, then as you can see, the bricks are actually deleted. Okay, cool. And the reason why they're deleted is that if we show the clones, as you can see, there is a non-moving ball that is stamped on the collision of the brick and the normal ball. And that's why the brick is able to detect whether it's touching the ball. All right, so let's make the stationary balls invisible again. So now we also want to make sure to delete the stationary ball clones after some time. So under the create stationary clone block, I'm going to go to events and drag a broadcast message and put it on the very top. And I'll broadcast a new message and call this delete stationary clones. And then click OK. All right. And now I'm going to drag a when I receive delete stationary clones. Then I'm going to go to control and drag an if and check if is stationary clone is equal to yes. Then we want to simply delete it. So let's go to control and drag a delete this clone. And now the old stationary ball clones should be deleted when the ball bounces to a new brick. So now we want the balls to actually bounce on the paddle because right now it's just going through it. So under the update movement block, let's go to control and let's grab an if and let's check if the ball is touching the paddle. Then let's copy these two blocks over here for the set and change y by yvel. And let's also drag the set xvel block and drag it after the change y by yvel. All right, so now this is pretty much the exact same thing as when the ball touches a brick. So if the ball touches the paddle, then it's gonna simply bounce off it. So let's try it out. And now as you can see, the ball bounces off the paddle. However, it's bouncing the wrong way. And also I want some randomness to the bounce because right now it's bouncing at exactly a 45 degree angle every time. So to fix these two problems, I'm going to actually use the original speed variable. So let's go to variables and drag the original speed variable. And inside of our set y velocity block, let's do original speed and then go to operators times. And we want to get the sign of the y velocity variable. So whether it's positive or negative. So let's drag an abs of block and put it inside of the right side. And Let's go to variables, grab the y velocity variable, and then let's go to operators, grab a divided by operator, and let's drag the y velocity inside of the absolute of, and drag this on the left side of the divided by, and let's divide this by y velocity, and then go to operators, drag a multiplication operator, drag this on the left side, and multiply all of this by negative one. And then lastly, let's drag this on the right side of the multiplication. And now this should make the ball bounce off the paddle correctly. However, now we want the ball to sort of randomize its angle when it touches the paddle. So to add a bit of random rotation, let's drag a multiplication operator and then drag a pick random to block, put this on the right side. And let's try something like pick random from 0.9 to 1.1. And then lastly, drag this on the left side of the multiplication block. All right, so this block might look a bit confusing, but pretty much this block gets the sign of the ball's y velocity and then makes the ball reverse its y direction. 
and then this part changes the ball's angle by a tiny bit. All right, so let's drag this block inside of the set y velocity two block. Okay, and then lastly, instead of this for the x velocity, let's right click and duplicate the abs of y velocity divided by y velocity part and change the two y velocities to x velocity. And then lastly, let's go to operators and drag a multiplication operator and then drag a minus operator and drag the multiplication on the left side and go to variables, drag original speed, multiply it by two and then subtract y velocity and then go to operators, drag a multiplication operator, drag this on the left side and drag this part on the right side and drag this entire code inside of the x velocity. So pretty much the ball's total velocity is the ball's y velocity plus the ball's x velocity. So if the ball's y velocity is randomly a bit higher due to this number, then we want the ball's x velocity to be a bit lower. However, if the ball's y velocity is randomly a bit lower, then we want the ball's x velocity to be a bit higher. So that's pretty much what this block does, and it also reverses the ball's direction. All right, that was the most complicated part of this entire tutorial, but now if we try it out, then, as you can see, the ball bounces off the paddle. All right, cool. And now, we want the ball to actually bounce off the edges of the screen. So to do so, let's create a new sprite, and I'll just name this border, and then we want the ball to collide off of the left, right, and top edges of the screen. So let's go to the rectangle tool and let's create a thin rectangle on the left side. And then I'll just copy this rectangle and put it on the right side. And then after that, I'll copy it one more time and hold the shift key while rotating this and add the top part of the border and then extend it all the way to the edge. And lastly, I'll make it go to zero, zero. So change the X to zero and change the Y to zero. And now we have our border like so. Okay, cool. So now inside of the code, I'm just gonna make the border invisible. So let's go to events and drag a wind flag clicked. And let's go to motion and make sure to set it to zero, zero and go inside of looks. And I'm gonna set its ghost effect to 100. And now if we go inside of the ball sprite, then all we have to do is to go to operators and drag an or and check if the ball is touching the brick or touching the border, then do all of its collision stuff. Okay, and now let's right click duplicate this for the other check. And now the ball should collide with the border. And as you can see, the ball now bounces off the edge of the screen like so. All right, cool. And now to make the game a bit more fun, let's make some of the bricks drop a power up when it's destroyed, which spawns even more balls. So to do so, let's create a new sprite and I'll call this one power up. All right, so this will be my costume. And now inside of the code, I'm gonna go to events and drag a wind flag clicked and then hide the original sprite. All right, and now inside of the brick sprite, once the brick is destroyed, Let's go to control and drag an if, and let's go to operators. And I'm gonna check if pick random one to four is equal to four, then the brick is going to spawn a power up. So let's go to control and drag a create clone of myself block and change it to the power up sprite and put it inside of the if touching ball. And then after that, we have to actually record the location of the brick so that the power up knows where to spawn. So let's go to variables and I'll create two new variables. One of them will be power up spawn X. And then this time keep for all sprites and then click okay. And I also want to create a power up spawn Y variable and then click okay. And before the create clone of power up, let's set power up spawn X to the bricks X position and power up spawn Y to the bricks Y position. All right, and then after that,
Let's go inside of the power up sprite. And then we want to make the clone spawn. And let's also make it fall down to the bottom of the screen. So let's go to control and drag a one star as a clone. Then let's go to looks and show the clone. And then make it go to the power up spawn X and power up spawn Y. And now after the clone spawns and goes to its correct position, let's go to control and drag a repeat until the Y position of the sprite is less than, let's say, negative 175. Then let's change Y by, let's say, negative 5. So the power up will go downwards. And then inside of this repeat until, we wanted to check if it's touching the paddle, then we want to spawn an extra ball. So let's go to control and drag an if, and go to sensing, check if touching the paddle. Then if it is, let's go to events and broadcast a new message. And I'll call this something like spawn extra ball. And lastly, let's go to control and delete the clone inside of the if. And let's also delete the clone right after the repeat until, or if it touches the bottom of the screen. All right, so that's all the code for the power up sprite. And then inside of the ball sprite, let's drag a when and receive spawn extra ball. Then we want to create a new ball clone. So let's go to control and drag a create clone myself. And then go to variables and make sure to set is stationary clone to no because we are spawning an actual ball clone. And now let's try it out. So one in four bricks will spawn a power up because we use the pick random one to four. All right, there's a power up. And once we collect one, then as you can see, a new ball spawns. All right, cool. However, one problem is that sometimes multiple balls spawn like that. And that's because inside of the spawn extra ball message, every single ball sprite, no matter whether it's the original sprite or the clone, are all creating clones of itself. So that means multiple clones are being created whenever this message is received. However, we only want the original ball sprite to receive this message. So to do so, we have to create a new variable and I'll call this something like is original sprite and then select for the sprite only and click okay. So when the flag is clicked, then we want to set is original sprite to yes because only the original sprite will receive the when flag clicked. And then under when I start as a clone, we want to set is original sprite to no, because all clones are not the original sprite. And then lastly, inside of the spawn extra ball, we want to check if is original sprite is equal to yes, then we want to create clone of the ball. All right, so now let's try it out. So once we get a power up, then only one extra ball should spawn, like so. All right, cool. And now lastly, we want the balls to actually disappear once they hit the bottom of the screen. And also, once there's no more balls left, we want to lose the game. So first off, to check whether the ball's touching the bottom of the screen, let's create a new custom block. And I'll call this something like check touching bottom of screen and then click OK. And let's drag check touching of bottom of screen inside of the forever loop. And for this block, let's just simply check if the Y position is less than, let's try negative 178. Then let's first broadcast delete all stationary ball clones and then delete this clone. All right, so now if we try it out, then, as you can see, the ball disappears once it hits the bottom of the screen. All right, cool. And now lastly, we want to stop the game once there are no more balls in play. So to do so, we have to keep track of the number of balls, and then if the ball count reaches to zero, then we stop the game. So let's go to variables and create a new variable, and I'll call this something like ball count, and then keep for all sprites, and click OK. So under the win flag clicked, 
Let's first set ball count to zero. And whenever a clone is created, then we want to change ball count by one. And whenever a clone reaches the bottom of the screen, then we want to change ball count by negative one because the clone is being deleted. And lastly, every time a stationary clone is deleted, we want to change ball count by negative one. Okay, and now every time the ball count changes, we want to check if the game is over. So to do so, let's create a new custom block. And I'll call this something like check game over and click OK. And inside of this block, it's super simple. If the ball count is less than one, so if ball count is less than one, which means that there are no more balls on the screen, then let's simply stop all. All right. And now after that, whenever the ball count decreases, let's drag the check game over and put it right after the change ball count. Okay. So there's one after the delete stationary clones. And there's also one when the ball touches the bottom of the screen. All right. So let's try it out. And now, as you can see, the ball touched the bottom of the screen and the game stops. All right, so that's pretty much the entire game. And lastly, I'll just make a few color changes to make the game a bit more nice. All right, so I made the brick and ball white and the background a darker color. And now we have the entire game. So we have the ball and some bricks drop power-ups when destroyed, which spawns even more balls. And our goal is to break all of the bricks. Okay. And once all of the balls disappear, then the game stops like so. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too, if you haven't already. By the way, this project is shared on my Scratch profile. Link is in the description below. Also, let me know in the comments below what game tutorial you want to see next. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!